In the last few videos, we've been dealing with Pythagorean triples. Those are special right triangles where all three sides come out with whole numbers. And now those are very rare. In most circumstances, if you're trying to actually apply this in a real world circumstance, uh, what you want to do is find the third side, and these don't work out evenly, and so then uh, how would you go from there? Well, let's set this up with the Pythagorean theorem and see. Pythagorean theorem says that this length squared, so x squared, is equal to the sum of the squares here. So it's 10 squared plus 7 squared. Okay. Well, it's easy enough to find 10 squared and 7 squared. This is 100, and this is 49. So the answer is 149. Okay. But that's x squared, and the question is, what is x? So the last step here is we need to say x is going to be the square root of 149. And that's the part uh, that's harder if you're just doing this by hand. Now, the real method that uh, everybody, engineers, scientists, mathematicians, whoever's doing this in the real world today, they would immediately haul out a calculator, find the square root of 149, and they're done. Okay? You just put in 149 and hit the square root key. Although, on some modern calculators, the keystroke sequence is different, but that's the general idea. Take the square root of 149 on a calculator. But in a sense, we're passing the buck there. There's somebody behind that calculator who worked out how do you figure out the square root of 149. So in the name of letting this not be a big black mystery, let's actually work it out for ourselves, just as though we were in the ancient world, and all you have is a stick and you're scribbling in the sand, how would you figure out the square root of something like this? Now the method I'm going to show you is one, uh, sometimes it's called the Babylonian method, and sometimes it's called Heron's method, and this actually is an ancient method, and in fact is one of the most efficient ways of doing this, and in fact this is the way that's typically behind the programming in your calculator or on a computer. So when you hit the square root key, the calculator itself is doing the method that I'm about to show you. Okay, here's what happens. You start with step one, is you guess. Now, it doesn't matter how bad the guess is, but if you make a good guess, you'll have to use fewer steps. So no matter how bad your guess is, every time you go through this cycle that I'm going to show you, it's going to improve the answer very quickly. Okay? Second step. You take your guess and divide it into the number that we're interested in. So I'm going to divide. Okay? When I divide, I get an answer. And the third step is to average the answer with the original guess. Now, it's like this. If the original guess is too small, it'll go into this number too many times and the answer will come out too big. If I average the two, I'm going to get closer to the correct answer than either my guess or the answer to the division problem. And that can, be, can become a second guess and I go back and repeat the process. So this is a, called an iterative solution, an iteration is when I do a process over and over again. Now you might think over and over again, that sounds tedious. Well here's the good news. This method is so efficient that it will essentially double the number of correct digits on every pass. So if you have one correct digit, you're likely to get two correct digits on one pass, four correct digits on the next pass, eight on the next, and so three cycles of this you could take a one-digit answer into an eight-digit answer, uh, just like that. And that's as good as many calculators will do it. So three divisions, and then the averaging is very easy compared to division. Okay? So let's go through this. Okay, so when we start here, I'm going to look at what number squared gets me close to 149. And you might recognize that 12 times 12 is 144. All right? So I'm going to make 12 my first guess. So if I divide 12 into 149, 12 goes into 14 once, 
12 goes into 29 twice. And notice that already I have confirmation that my ans my guess was good to at least two digits. Okay? And so I'm going to go to four digits before I stop here. And so I'll bring down the 0, 12 into 50. 4 times 12 is 48. Okay, 12 goes into 20 once. Let's take it one more digit. And uh, 8 and 2 is 10. There we go. And 12 into 80. Uh, let's see, 6 times 12 is 72. Okay, let's stop there. Okay, now we want to average. So if I take 12.416 uh, and 12.0, add them together, 24.416. And I like to just do short division when I'm dividing by 2. I don't know if they even teach you this anymore. But it's sort of like taking the scratch work and doing it in your head. So 2 into 2 goes once. 2 into 4 goes twice. And that's 2. 2 into 1, it doesn't go, but we bring the 1 over, so that's like a 16. This would be an 8. So 12.208. Let's compare this to what a calculator says. Notice we only did one loop here. And we're expecting to, to be correct to four digits. And we might even get a little bit better than that because, well, we just might. Okay. Okay, so take 149 and simply hit the square root key. 12.206. Here's 12.208. So we're off by two digits in this place. We're accurate to four digits. What if you want more accuracy? Well, use a calculator or do it again. If you take 12.208 or even 12.20 and divide it into 149, if I take the four digits here, I should get eight digits after one more division. I am dividing by a bigger number. So, there you go. In any case, um, the main reason I'm showing you this is not because it's a practical thing that I'm expecting you to do in real life. In real life, you're going to use a calculator because calculators are so commonly available. And if you're going to do anything in science and math, you're going to always have a calculator handy. Okay. However, hopefully this demystifies it. What you're doing when you're finding a square root is figuring out a number which, when you square it, will give you the number you're starting with. Okay, I'm trying to find a number whose square is 149. Let's try it uh, with a variation here. This time I'm going to uh, just make up a triangle and let's say that this time we know the hypotenuse. So this is 8 and let's say this side is 3 and we don't know this. Okay, I didn't do it to scale here. So now I can say I know that if I take x squared plus 3 squared, I'm going to get 8 squared. So I go backwards. When I know the hypotenuse, I start with that. So I get 8 squared minus 3 squared is going to give us x squared. So to find x, we take the square root. Okay. Well, 8 times 8 is 64. 3 times 3 is 9. And 64 minus 9 is 55. So I want to find the square root of 55. 7 times 7 is 49. 8 times 8 is 64. So let's just start with 7. So that's only going to be 1. We know that that's good. It's 7 point something. And so we're expecting to get two digits of accuracy after one pass. And after a second pass, we get four digits of accuracy. Or thereabouts. Okay? So 7 into 55. Okay. 7 times 7 is 49, 9 and 6 is 15, and then bring down a 0. Uh, 7 times 8 is 56. So 7.8 something. Then halfway between these, you can average them in your head, it's going to be 7.4. You could add them together and divide by 2. So 7.4 is my second guess. Divide that into 55. Move it, move it, park it, and divide it. And since I'm expecting that's good, that this is good, the two places, I'm going to go at least two places past the decimal. 
So 74 into 550 is about like 7 into 55. So let's say 7 times 4 times 7 is 28. 49, 51. 8 and 2 is 10. What's up? 32. 7 into 32. Well, 5 times 7 is 35, so that's going to be a 4. So we're correct to two digits, it looks like. Uh, 7.4 is verified here to two digits there. So keep going for two more digits. 4 times 4 is 16. 4 times 7 is 28, and 1 is 29. 6 and 4 is 10. Um, this is 2. Okay. 7 into 24. Well... Uh, 3 times 7 is 21. That's going to be pretty close. 3 times 4 is 12. Uh, 3 times 7 is 21. 22. 18. Bring down the 0. 7 into 18. Well, it goes twice into 14, so let's just leave it at that. Alright, I'm going to stop there and then average these, and then that'll be done for four digits of accuracy, we think. 7.432, 7.400, add them together, divide by 2, comes out 7.4, half of 3 would be 1 with a remainder, and half of 12 is a 6. So I'm guessing 7.416, let's bring up a calculator, and if I take the square root of 55, 7.416. There we go. Now, um, how would I do this in the real world? I would just bring up a calculator from the start. I see that's my hypotenuse, and I'm looking for a leg. So I take 8 squared, and it's like 8 squared, and then even though I can do that in my head, then I have 3 squared, and then so I go minus 3 squared equals 55, and take the square root. 7.416. It's just that fast. Okay, uh, square roots are not a big deal um, if you have uh, standard tools for doing math in the real world. It's actually not that big a deal if you have uh, access to this simple formula I showed you. Keep in mind, by the way, the ancients were doing this with fractions, not decimals. They didn't even have decimals to work with. So it was a bit more of a problem than I'm presenting here. But this method actually works well with fractions. You might try it. You do the same steps. You divide, you take a guess, you divide, and you average, and you do it again. And even working with fractions, I think you'll find that you can find square roots. That would be an interesting challenge. If you remember doing the pi uh, lesson from May, uh, Archimedes had to find square roots, and he used fractions. And uh, this is maybe the way he did it. Uh, there are other possible ways he might have done it. Uh, in any case, uh, it was an interesting challenge for somebody who did not have modern math tools to work with. Okay.